A couple days ago, I saw this tweet from Brian Cardell that says, Anybody have any bright ideas on how I can do the equivalent of overflow hidden, but actually hide elements so they aren't tabbable? So I have an idea about how that might be possible. It doesn't seem possible using CSS alone, but what if we can make a little demo and try using JavaScript to help us? So here I have some HTML. There's one div element which has some contents, and inside the contents there are some links, just so that I had some extra tags, and I've also added some input tags randomly throughout. Those will be the tabbable elements that we're trying to tab to. Right now, if I were to just remove all of the code that I've done, you would see that it tabs through all of the inputs. This is what we don't want. It seems to be that the goal is to have it focus this one and this one and not see any of the ones below here that are out of sight. So let's check out what I've done. To, to do this, I have written two JavaScript functions, one called insight and one called out of sight. And they work in very similar ways. So for both of them, we give them a CSS selector and a CSS rule. So th this is an example of a CSS selector for div, and all of these properties are the content of the rule. So inside these functions, when we've given them a selector and a rule, we are going to be generating styles to return to a style sheet, and we're also going to be counting matching tags. So for every tag in the document that matches the selector that we've given, we're going to call those tag. We'll generate an attribute based on the selector that was given. And then here's our logic. If that tag's position offset from the top of its element is greater than its containing element's scroll position, that's the first part. The second part, we need both of these conditions to be true. If the tag's position from the top of its parent element is less than its parent's scroll position plus height, then we know that it is in sight. So for any element that is in sight, to the generated styles we add uh, one, one rule here, and the selector is a rewritten selector that adds that attribute that we generated, as well as the element count so this will allow us to target specific elements that match our conditions. And then to the rule, we just pass through, without any changes, the styles that were given. To the tag, we also set this same attribute. So this is how this selector is able to match it. We're setting it right here. And then we're going to increase the count by one, because we found one matching tag. Now, if we find a tag, run these tests, and it is false, it is not here, we are going to set an attribute that removes the count. So this no longer will be able to be targeted by the styles that are output or have been output by this plugin. At the end, we return all the styles that we generated. So the second one works the exact same way. The only difference here is the direction of the logic. So in, in the case of wanting it to be under the top and above the bottom, we have the uh, greater than and less than. And here, we don't need it to be both above the top and under the bottom. We want either above the top or under the bottom. And the logic is the same, just with the opposite direction here. So if it falls outside of what is visible within the parent, we're doing the same thing. We're generating the style, attaching the attribute, and counting it. So how can I use these two functions to actually apply styles to a style sheet? So for that, I'm using a little bit of JS and CSS. So this is an event-driven style sheet. It exists as a JavaScript template string right here, and we are applying it based on these events. So on the window load, on every window resize, and we only have one div element here. So for just the single div element we have, uh, I've added an event listener for its scroll event. So every time any one of these events fires, we are reprocessing this style sheet. So this function, quite simply, looks for a style tag, and if that tag does not yet exist, it creates it and attaches it to the page. Then it says the inner HTML of this style tag 
should be the result of evaluating this JS template string. So if you're familiar with JS template strings, these special brackets here uh, include kind of like nested JavaScript inside of that. So that's not that much different than saying tag inner HTML equals uh, the output from this function plus the output from this function. Uh, we could do that and it would function the same way. But by putting it in a template string like this, it's it's more CSS-like for authoring. You know, we've got our big selector here wrapping our rule, uh, but it also allows us to add kind of freestyle um, CSS anywhere, and this is not evaluated, it's just passed through as regular CSS. So if I did HTML background red, it just gets passed through. There's no dynamic anything, but this style sheet is going to contain the generated styles from these functions, which may change over time. So let's check out what we have going on here. We have for if it's in sight, uh, any tag within div, so div asterisk, uh, we're going to apply background lime. So is that what we see here? The a tags and the input tags seem to have a green background. And as we scroll, they seem to do that. So we'll check out what's actually happening here. The next thing is if it's out of sight, we're trying to apply visibility hidden. So that's about it. So now we'll inspect what's going on with the attributes. So in HTML, we should expect to see for all of these insight ones that have gained the green background, they've got a rule generated for them. Uh, but what we want to pay attention to here is data insight 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are all the ones that are in sight. And now if we scroll down here, uh, this one is not in sight. This one's not in sight. And this one's not in sight. And that's the last one. So it, as we scroll, we see these attributes here shifting. When I scroll all the way to the bottom, this one is no longer uh, data insight zero, like it was up here. Now data insight zero is this one, which is the first one visible. So that's the first one, the second one visible, third one, fourth one, and fifth one visible. And what should we expect to see for the out of sight ones? Data out of sight, zero, one, two, three. So you can see these shift around as we're scrolling. If we scroll into the middle, we've got a couple out of sight. We have all of our in sight ones and then back to our out of sight ones. So to try tabbing, it appears only the ones that are in sight are tabbable. And it doesn't matter where we scroll. Only the ones in sight can be tabbed to. So let's look at the CSS that's being generated. Now, at any given moment, it looks like there's about four or five of these visible at any time, and there's about four or five that are invisible. So as we scroll, all that we'll see, it, it won't be very much, but any time that there's uh, five of one or four of the other, we'll just see it add or remove a rule. But the count stays pretty much the same because it's reassigning the count every time it calculates. So even though which element this refers to is changing the rule itself, as long as there's one element, this first rule here is going to be output in the style sheet. So there's not an awful lot of style changes going on, but I think that covers what we're trying to do. And then if I were to remove this, uh, or even just remove this, So you can see that visibility hidden added to the correct element at the correct time seems to do what we want. 